and blessings and joy to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Such a joy to live in Him and to have Him living in us. I am so grateful today for my heritage. I was really basically born, raised in a, in a church with my, my parents were Christians and so I have a great heritage and a great foundation that has really become a, a, a part of my DNA. I, I, I grew up singing wonderful anointed old hymns of the church and hearing, hearing the word preached many times per week all of my uh, time that I was living at home. And so I, I'm grateful to have known the Lord all of my life. Um, I want to, to speak today on, on a subject similar to that. But before I go into the lesson, I want to remind you about some of, the, some of the wonderful resources that we have with Celebration Ministries. And the first one is a prophetic worship CD. It's Spontaneous Worship, and it's called You Will Overcome. And we brought this out from spontaneous music uh, of our conferences when the presence of the Lord would be so strong and so powerful and the musicians and the singers and I would all begin to prophesy and sing and play the music from around the throne. And the Lord said, entitle it, You Will Overcome, as a message to all of us during these challenging, globally challenging times. We will overcome. You will overcome. Get this CD from iTunes, Apple Music, all of the streaming CDs. Firestorm Prophetic Worship is our label. And you can download this and it will enfold you in such power. One of the, one of the songs that came, uh, the new songs, the prophetic song that came is called Take a Drink. And it, it's really in, encouraging us to take a drink of the living waters because it will refresh us and give us great strength. So I encourage you to look at our website and, and go on many of the other places where our, our books and our CDs are available because they will be a strength to you and they will feed you in this hour. So many of us during this time that's so challenging, we've been full of fear, <laughs> full of apprehension, uh, just overwhelmed look, looking at global events that are unprecedented in all of our lifetime. And, and, and we become filled with many times depression, with oppression, with apathy, with hopelessness, um, just, just a, a lack, unbelief, full of unbelief. But the Bible tells us that we need to be full of the fullness of God. And so the title of this message is, What Are You Full Of? What am I full of? What are we full of in this hour? Because we must get to the point of living with God, that we're full of His Spirit. If you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and He's in your heart, then there was a second experience in Acts. If you will look at the book of Acts, and the, they were told to, to stay in the upper room and they, they were told that power would come and then suddenly there was this massive sound and it was the coming of the Holy Spirit who is the power of God. In this hour, you need the power of God. You need to be full of the Holy Spirit, full of the power of God. And we're going to talk about the concept of fullness. But if you will just ask the Lord Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in His fire, then those tongues of, of fire that, that Paul talks about, he says, I pray in the Spirit and I pray with the understanding also. That's a release of what you're full of. Right. And the, that's a release of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So this is a year of divine established identity, discovering that identity. Who am I and 
What am I full of? You may not be who you think you are or who the world has told you you are because we need to become who God says we are and who we're created to be. We need to be full of Christ, full of His graciousness and His mercy. God is developing us as vessels to enlarge our capacity to be more full of Him. Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the time is coming when the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters that cover the sea. So, this is my earth. My earth. I'm going to get rid of this body one day and I can, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. <laughs> but right now, this is my earth. And so my earth, my spirit and soul and body can be filled with the knowledge of God. Because when I as a person and you as a person become filled with the knowledge of God, then we can send that knowledge out across the earth. How do you think the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to fill the earth? It's going to fill the earth through His people. <laughs> it's going to fill the earth. It's going to, it's going to multiply out of His people because they're going to pour it out. So let's look at Webster's definition of to fill. It means to make universally prevalent. In other words, it's, it's everywhere. It means, number two, it means to press, to crowd in, to crown in until there's no room for anything else. Have you ever eaten until you were so full that, that you, you, you wanted to eat more but you were so full you couldn't get anything else in there? That's that concept to cram until there's no room for anything else. Number three is to press and dilate. In other words, make it bigger on all sides to the extremities like filling the sails with wind until they're creaking because the wind is so strong. And the fourth definition from Webster is to fill as much as gives great satisfaction. <laughs> so many of us need to, we need to look at ourselves. What am I full of today? What am I full of? I need to get rid of this hate. I need to get rid of this, this, this. Um, there's such a, I feel this because I love justice. And there's so much injustice today. And I, I get very, very stressed and upset and angry at injustice. And the Lord doesn't like injustice either. <laughs> And I have the Lord full of me, but he doesn't, get, he doesn't get frightened. He doesn't get angry. He doesn't. So we need, to, we need to get this poison. All of these human emotions and all of these, these things that come from the enemy of our souls, we need to get rid of them and learn to be filled with kingdom, the kingdom of heaven's fullness. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we need to become filled with all he is with His power, His love, strength, kindness, joy, peace. The book of Ephesians, I, I, I encourage you to read the book of Ephesians from the beginning to the end. It tells us how to live. And it talks a lot about the concept of fullness. <clears throat> Ephesians 1, starting with verse 19 and then going to 22 and 23. So you can know and understand what is the immeasurable the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of His power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of His mighty strength. And it goes on to say He's appointed Him as head of the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. He is the fullness of in the church. So we're not availing ourselves of what we've already been given. We've already been given the fullness of Him. It says He fills all in all, the, for in that body lives the full measure of Him who makes everything complete and fills everything everywhere with Himself. Now, you know, I can imagine and I have experienced the concept of being filled with food because that's my body. But what about my mind filled with the thoughts of Christ? What about my emotions filled 
with the emotions of Christ, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, faith. What about my will? Filled with the will of God. Even Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. So we are a complicated, complex creation, and all of us, not just our spirit, all of us need to be filled with Christ. We've been much like electric cords, just not plugged in. <laughs> I am presence driven, and so I'm driven to connect. We need to pull up to, <coughs> excuse me, we need to pull up to what we used to call when I was growing up to fill your gasoline tank, we had to fill up. We had to go to the filling station. We, we always called it the filling station. You and I in the spirit, we need to pull up to the filling station and be filled. Now Ephesians, remember I told you Ephesians about the concept of fullness in Ephesians. So in Ephesians 3.18, it tells us how. It says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which you're called. So we fill ourselves with light by reading the Word of God, by reading it, by reading it. I mean, it is alive. The Word of God is alive. The Logos, is, it, it causes the, the Holy Spirit to begin to shine His light on it. And when we read it with the Holy Spirit, the light of God jumps off the pages. Have you ever had that experience where the, 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 it, you can, in the Spirit, the words just seem to jump off the page. Well, that's how you flood your eyes of your heart with light. It's with the Lord, with the words of the Lord and the presence of the Lord. And it goes on to say so that you can practically through experience know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. Knowing the love of Christ can't be found by knowledge. You can't, you can't get there by knowledge. It surpasses knowledge and it says knowledge is without experience. Just sheer intellectual knowledge doesn't necessarily equate experience so that you may be filled. There's our word. Filled through all your being, my being, all of my being, mind, will, emotions, spirit, and body, flooded all may have the rich measure of the fullness of God and the divine presence. And then, listen, Please, this is so powerful. Become a body or a being wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Now to him, by the action of his power that is, work, is at work within us, more than we could ask or think, be glory in the church. When we are filled throughout all our being to all the fullness of God, then we see the glory and we release the glory and we know by being filled with light. He fills. We pull up to the filling station. <laughs> we draw near to Him. He fills. We draw near to Him. He fills. We drive away. We go about our life. We pour out. We come back to the filling station day by day. Sometimes hour by hour, we fill so that we become complete. So many Christians are fragmented. Their soul is fragmented. Their mind is tossed to and fro. And so when we are complete in Him, we have a plan of God, a, a house of God that is full of God and completely full, then, then we see Ephesians 4.13. That, that it might develop then that we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and the completeness found in Him. Do you find yourselves one, one day you feel one way and the next day you feel another way and one day you're grounded and rooted and filled with light in the next day, that's a fragmentation. That's a, that's a setting aside yourself in parts. You're one way in one place. It's like a lot of politicians today. They're one way in one place. 
say one thing in one place to one people, say a different thing in another place to another people. Listen, we're not politicians. We're the creation of God for His glory and His pleasure that we be filled to all the fullness and completeness of the nature of the love of God and the power of Christ. And so our earth, it is our destiny that our earth be filled. Colossians 1.19 says, For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, and attributes should dwell in Him permanently. Well, He's our example. He's our brother. He's our beloved. We are to be like Him so that all of the divine fullness and perfection and powers and attributes dwell in us permanently, completely. Today we're in a massive shift. It's almost globally, it's, it's, it's a cataclysmic shift, greater than we could ever know. And what the, world, what the Lord is doing in and through, and the Lord spoke to me in the unseen world, what He's doing in the unseen world during this incredible change, we can't even perceive or conceive or understand what He's doing. But more is being changed worldwide in this season than any revival, any renewal, any outpouring even has changed in the past, even though that's what we're calling for. That's what we're praying for. We're praying for revival. So we must be in tune with God about the changing of our heart, of our, of our, uh, of our nations, our, our families. We must change and prepare for the season that's ahead. We must discern because what's happening is about the coming of the kingdom and the manifesting of the kingdom worldwide despite all of the challenges. Now, there's an analogy in the Old Testament and the New Testament about the wineskins. Uh, the, first, the first thing that Jesus did, the first glory that he showed was when he changed the water into wine. And so the Holy Spirit, is an, it's an analogy for the Holy Spirit and, and, and the whole thing about new wineskins and old wineskins and new wine. So <clears throat> back then they put wine in skins because they used skins for everything. And so when the wineskin would get old, the skin would get rigid and hard and, and brittle. And so then if they poured new wine into that old wineskin, well, new wine, as it ages, it expands. This is such a powerful, many of you have probably heard this, but it's such a powerful analogy. And so when the new wine expands in the old wine skin, the old wine skin bursts. It can't take it. So the new wine skin is changing our perspective, changing our paradigms, changing our opinions and our mindsets to prepare for the new season, the new wine the new thing that God, the Holy Spirit, is doing so that we are stretched as that new thing begins to move throughout our being. We are stretched to contain the expanding of the kingdom. It, it's got to expand. We need to change our wineskin periodically <laughs> because the kingdom was, it is, and it's coming. And it's expanding day by day by day by day. And that new wineskin must be ready to receive the reality of the spirituality or the real works of the spirit. Because the old wine skin wants everything to be the way it always was. And so religion wants everything to be the way it always was. And if the way it always was is the way we are, we will never ever embrace what God is doing and what God's power is expanding to accomplish in the miraculous across the earth. It's the reality of the Spirit, and He's drastically changing the human perspective so that we can embrace all that he's doing. He's moving on whether we like it or not. And so we must allow the focus. You know, a lot of times we see the counterfeit. We see the false miracles. We see the false prophets. Many false prophets today prophesying doom and gloom. 
This is not the Holy Spirit. And so we know that's not God. So we throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. And we must not let the false ruin us for the true and the new. 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 That's what's happening today is the truth of God and the ignition of faith in the supernatural works of God. We expect God to do great marvelous exploits, to do great glory. So we must open our minds to receive the true spirit, to be full of all that God wants to do. Not full in an old wineskin, but full in the newness, expansion of our understanding. So we expand. The, the disciples said, help our faith. Oh, help our faith. So we say today, God, increase our faith. Increase expansion. Because what's happening now is outside of my old boundaries. We've got to have God-sized boundaries for the supernatural, for the multiplication, for the water into wine, for the loaves and the fishes. We've got to embrace the realm of the miraculous because the kingdom is rising. I've seen in my own ministry many miracles in the past. I've seen a frozen foot, you know, unfrozen with just a simple prayer. I've seen... I've seen holy laughter come to people who were suicidal and wanting to die and their whole thing was changed. So pride will stop us from accepting these mighty miracles. Don't let pride be that old wineskin that keeps you from embracing the miraculous. Wonders are ahead. That's what Joshua said. Consecrate yourselves because tomorrow the Lord will do wonders in your midst. Well, they were facing a, a river in flood stage before they could get to the promises. And yet Joshua was saying, wonders are coming. I'm saying to you, wonders are coming. Don't look at impossibilities. Don't give up. Don't lie back. Don't hold on to your rigid religious beliefs. Religion is an evil spirit. You don't want to be religious. You want to have the fullness of God in you a relationship, a relationship because he's bringing down pride so that it makes way for that new wineskin. He's comforting his people, Isaiah 61, 3. He's, he's bringing the oil of joy for mourning. He's preparing us for what he's doing. The scripture says in Isaiah 61, they will rebuild the old ruins, but they'll raise up and repair. We've got to raise up and repair so that we can embrace the new. So 1 Peter 5.10 says, After you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his own, will himself complete and make you what you should be. Establish and ground you securely and strengthen you and settle you. There's an unsettling today. There's like, it's like the sands at the seashore when the, when the waves come in and suddenly where you were standing is, is, is changing and shifting. And we just unconsciously at the beach, we expect it because we know what's happening. Well, now I'm telling you what's happening. I'm telling you by the Spirit, there is a shifting. There is a shifting and God wants to order our steps. His Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path and he wants to show us where to stand and allow him to complete us, to fill us. Colossians 2 verse 9 says, fill us with the whole fullness of the deity so that we are in him made full and having come to fullness of life. We want to be full of that life, that joy, that expectation, that faith that divine nature. And in order to do that, we have to receive that fullness. Religion, rigidity, old wineskin. It will hold you rigid until you cannot receive. Receiving is the key. The Lord has told, told us clearly in His Word, clearly in the Bible, He's told us He wants to fill us with all the fullness of God. Don't let that keep you from receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Don't let the devil tell you tongues are, are of the devil. That's ridiculous. It's very scriptural if you just read it. He who speaks in an unknown tongue, Corinthians, speaks mysteries to God. 
Listen, there are mysteries to be explored. There are places to go that you've never been before. This is an exciting time to be alive. This is a time to receive all. Listen, I'm desperate for God. I'm hungry for God. I want all God has. And you need to be that way too because when we have that hunger and that desperation, we say, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it makes me look undignified. I don't care if my body doesn't want to do it, but the rest of me does. I want body, soul, and spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit and with the power of God in my new wine skin, fullness, fullness, full, 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 until there, I feel like there can't even be any more. I've heard people that have been in the presence and the fire of God on their back on the floor for so long, and they said that they they just... The, the presence of the Lord was so powerful that they said, no more, God, no more. And I've always said, I'm never going to say that. I'm never going to say that because I want so much, so much of God. So I impart that to you, that hunger for the fullness of all that God is, that, that, that pattern in our lives is love and joy and peace, all that the kingdom is because of the fullness of God that is in us. We are kingdom residents. We are kingdom of heaven residents. We live in a kingdom that is in this world, but not of this world. And it is full of power and love and peace and healing. It's full of all that God is. And so, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of this voice, we pray that we be filled. We open ourselves and we pray that we be filled to all the fullness of God, to all the divine fullness permanently in our mind, in our will, in our emotions, in our spirit, in our body, to the fullness of God. Touch our physical bodies, God, not just so we can be healed, which we want to be healed, but touch our physical bodies that we can sense and understand and receive in the body as well, not just mind and soul and body, but in body as well, the fullness of God, the fullness of that presence that is, it's, it's, it's past knowledge. That love is past knowledge. Lord, we ask you to give it to all those under the sound of this voice, the fullness of God. Reach out to him today and receive the fullness of all that he is so that you can be transformed from glory to glory to glory in him. Amen. Beautiful one, beautiful